Welcome to Black Belt Beauty Radio. Get ready. It's time to rise. Um, with a crystal in my hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> of course. Well, no. So um, I, I just to share this with you, the how I was saying the other day, I went to see one of my favorite bands of all yes. time. So I'm wearing their one of their concert shirts, Depeche Mode. Love it. And I'm, I literally still feel like I'm fucking on Venus because mm. that's where I went mm. at their show. And I've seen them a handful of times already. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Every time I see them, and I was front row this time, it's a Timo Brewery, and it was so oh my God. <laughs> it's great. Like, it's just the, 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 the feeling. This is actually a great segue because uh-huh. it's this— it's a it's a sensation of being so fucking liberated mm. in the moment. Mm-hmm. If there's any kind of perfect, blissful moment of being a human, mm. for me personally, it's that that moment, that moment there in Depeche Mode. And it that that brings me kind of drawing us into the conversation now. Mm-hmm. When I think about you and where you are. Now in your life, because this is your second time on the podcast, which is so exciting. Yes. I, uh, it was, I can't remember exactly. I think it was four years ago or three years ago mm-hmm. um, that I had you on episode 61 or three. Correct. Wow. Cor- I know. So long ago. <laughs> so long ago. But it was, I will say this, I because I just listened to it again recently just to, you know, take it back in before we sat down and do this. Oh my God. It, first of all, I fucking love you. I loved Aww. you then. Oh. And it was so thank you. you. I felt I felt me loving you then. I mean, wow. I knew it, but to hear it back, it was very like no. I the, this girl like I clicked with you mm. right there, yeah, right, right then and there. Um, but it was so special to to take you in mm. where you mm. were at that stage of your life. And I will tell you, I think because I know you and I, you know, we we've recently like just come back together and we've had some conversations prior to this, um. You know, even though so much has changed for you, and we're going to dig into a lot of that, there is the, the what I what I gathered from you from that first conversation was I, I don't feel like it was this um, it's not this like super contrasting situation with where you are now. It was so beautiful and powerful. Like you are powerful mm-hmm. straight up. Mm-hmm. And it's it feels like your natural evolution mm. that <laughs> perfect. I didn't mean <laughs> to do that, but kind of fit in perfect. Um, the natural progression and evolution of, from where you were then to where you are now, to me as a woman in my 40s, too. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I've got some years on. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, she's fucking right on time. Wow. You're right wow. on time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm excited <laughs> to just like peel back however many layers we can in <laughs> yeah. this conversation and get more of you and your essence and your mm. frequency. I mean, w- we could start with what's on your heart right now. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you too. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. And thank you so much for that beautiful reflection and you being a little bit further down your path than I am, it means a lot to me for you to say that to me and to say that I'm right on time. And I feel like that was a timely message that I needed to hear oh. as well. So just thank you so much. Welcome. What is on my heart right now? Oh, it's a reframing of what feels like fear from going all in. Ooh. That's so good. (laughs) And so I've really recognized in my life that often the feeling of fear, it sometimes is just misplaced excitement for the unknown. I'm I'm getting chills thinking about it. I'm stoked Mm -hmm. for the unknown Mm -hmm. because I know that that's where all of my greatest growth has come from in beautiful moments. Yeah. I don't doubt that it's going to be hard. I don't doubt that I'll have some missteps and a lot of lessons learned and things like that. Yeah. But like I'm here and I'm in one piece. Like I've yeah. made it through 100% of the hardest things that I've gone through in life. Yes. So I have a lot of excitement because I think this is one of the first times that I'm putting like all of my cards out there and I'm going all in on my dreams and everything that I've always wanted to do in my life. There's no more waiting, no more looking for someone to do it with me or mm-hmm. someone to come help my situation. Like 
I had to really get to a point of realizing nobody is coming to save me. Mm -hmm. Nobody is coming to help me. Like I am the one that has to go all in on me if I want a chance at this life that I've envisioned. And I believe if you can envision a life, if you can see it, if you see it in your dreams, when you close your eyes and you ask yourself, what's on my own heart? What are those dreams? What are those visions? Mm -hmm. I think if you can see it, it's because there is that version of your life out there. It's like, it's already happening. It's like, we're on this journey on this path Mm -hmm. and it's, it literally already, already exists on that path. And once you can see it, you just start taking these little baby steps towards it. And then eventually it's your reality and you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's, this is happening. <laughs> I firmly agree. And I think, you know, so a couple of things, it's so interesting because I mean, those baby steps um, are really like the, in my interpretation or it's, it's the whispers from your heart. It's your soul speaking to you. It's your mm-hmm. intuition, right? Mm-hmm. All of the above. And it's A, not easy for a lot of people to even hear that or B, perhaps hear it, but then respond to it. So you're actually saying, A, I hear you. Mm. B, I choose to take action upon Mm. what I'm receiving. That's one thing. But what's the other thing I wanted to point out, which is so interesting is, you know, for anybody who's known you for a long time, who's been following you, um, it's interesting that you, how you say like, I'm, I'm officially going all in because even if you were to go back to our first episode, it's like, well, everything about you is fucking all in back then too. <laughs> My interpretation, and I'd love for you okay. just uh, to hear what you think about this and, you know, to share more about it. But I feel like perhaps, you know, in those earlier years, right, just relating to my, our, our connection back mm-hmm. then, right, where you were back then, it was a lot of, it was a lot of push, Mm. Whereas now you're in a lot of flow. Mm. So there's so much more <laughs> surrendering happening. So you were all in back then, but it was this push, go hard. You know, we can say hyper masculine energy. Yeah. And whereas now it's, it's like you, you're literally, you know, and you're, and you're doing it intentionally. You're not, you're not just like, oh, you know, all caution to the wind. So, you know, there's intelligence, there's wisdom, there mm-hmm. is you know, some mm. rational thinking happening. Mm. However, I feel like it's, it, you're actually more irrational now. Mm. This is the feminine coming in. This is the surrender and mm. the intuitive. And you're like, you know what? I don't fucking know what I know. <laughs> yes. And I'm just going to go <laughs> yes. to see what I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love your observations because it's spot on. You know, no. you're right. Back then I was all in and I was all in in the way that I knew how to be. And it was a lot of doing, a lot of um, excellence and making this happen. And granted, like excellence is just a part of my DNA. Like I always want to be great at whatever it is that I'm doing. I'm always going to seek to be better. That will never leave. It's a great attribute. I'm so thankful for it. But yes, I have so tapped into more of my feminine side and more of the flow. And what I realized is that there is divine wisdom within, Mm -hmm. right? So sometimes we think that in our masculine, we are crossing our T's and dotting our I's and we are like conceptually being the smartest with all these decisions, right? Yeah. yeah. But there's this like inner divine wisdom that is inside ready to guide us Mm -hmm. at every moment. Mm -hmm. So for me, the practice has been honestly getting out of my head, getting out of the doing Mm -hmm. and getting into the feeling and the being and accessing that divine wisdom. And I'm not perfect at it. Like Mm -hmm. I'm definitely way more in my feminine and in my flow and I'm tapping into that. But I find myself sometimes slipping back into the hyper-masculine and the get it done and fill out these forms. And, you know, and all of a sudden it's a lot to do and it's a lot on my plate, like realistically. Yeah. And so I can fall into that. So the practice for me has just been recognizing, okay, I just spent, you know, three, four hours doing some very heavily action-oriented things. And I need to do a five-minute breathwork session. Mm -hmm. I need to do a five-minute stretch in the sunshine with my puppies, which is what I did right before I came here. Oh, perfect. (laughs) You know, just these little practices to bring myself back to my body and my center and to access that divine. It's really yeah. beautiful when you start to listen. Yes. You know, even yeah. my journaling practice has really evolved over time. It was before, and I've even created a journal. I love journaling, right? Love that. Um, 
it was a lot of uh, thinking and doing, meaning like I know what I'm journaling about and mm-hmm. I'm the one like writing all the words, right? Mm-hmm. And now my practice has evolved so much. I actually wrote in your journal this morning, mm-hmm. which I absolutely love. Like, Thank you. So blessed by that. I was writing in it the other day too. And it's uh, really, really beautiful. And Thank it's you. perfect for the season that I'm in. I'm just <laughs> ah, so blessed by it. Yeah. Yes. So I was, I was writing in it and this time I stopped. And I paused and I just listened. And I was like, oh, that's what I need to write down. So I wrote that down. I'm like, okay, well, what else? What what else from that? And I was able to get answers and clarity and realize that like, if I get so caught up in the doing and the lists and the tasks mm-hmm. that I'm not truly listening, and if I'll just take a pause, a break from all that stuff, and I'll truly listen from within, mm-hmm. I can be reminded that I'm okay. I'm on the right path and I'm right where I need to be. It's so true. And, you know, I think what happens is, and I, and I so relate to this, especially in my own upbringing as well. It's, it's somewhat of a survival mechanism and it really works. And it It it, it, it works well for. (laughs) Would recommend to survive. (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) What I think happens is that we get comfortable trying to control Mm. and that's the masculine. That's the you know, I've, I've got this, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. That's powerful. So it's it's not to dismiss that. Mm-hmm. But what you're beautifully sharing is, but that's not the whole picture. Yes. We need harmony. Oh, yes. So when you let go of the, you know, constant need to grip mm-hmm. and to control, that's when you open up and you mm-hmm. allow. So even like in the journaling, Rather than I'm just going to, you know, you you actually like streamline, uh, you know, your consciousness. You just allowed your consciousness to come mm. through. Your heart actually has a brain, which is so fascinating. I don't know if you knew that, but it's like. That's it's, wild. It's scientifically fucking fascinating and spiritually profound. But it also makes a lot of sense. Yeah, this totally. is why, like, you know, it's yes. so cool. <laughs> and so like when your mind and your heart are working mm. together, mm. I believe that this is where you are living from your highest power and can access your highest self Mm. to carry you forward in your life. And I feel like that's really, that's where you're at now. That's, you know, and, and you're just getting deeper into it. Mm. I actually, I want to read something. Um, Hopefully I won't fuck this up, but (laughs) (laughs) by the way, I love observing the polarity of you in real time. Like you have your like deep, you know, masculine and your feminine, like (laughs) always together. And I love it. Like the way that it just, yes, it's so fun to watch. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. It just, I don't know. It just happens naturally with it. I always like my poetic way to say it is that Um, I'm more edge meets curve. Love that. It's so, it's so like delicious. I love that. Like as a writer, it's so satisfying when you get to these and speaking of writing, like what I'm about to read, this is um, a post of yours and I, I fucking love the writing in it. So I, oh, I don't want to fuck it up. You. But so it starts with saying a full fuck yes and nothing mm. less. At the beginning of this year, I decided to go all in, all in on every single dream, thought and vision that I could see within myself, all in to bring those things into reality. That way, if December 31st, 2023 was my last day on this earth or any day in 2023 on the way there, I would look back like, holy smokes, I actually did it. I lived fully and authentically as me. I truly experienced what this life and beautiful earth has to offer. I gave myself permission to fail. I gave myself the freedom to go and experience life. I gave myself the love and acceptance I always desired because the truth is, even if I never changed, I came into this world worthy of love and I will leave this experience just as worthy. I fucking love this part, right? (laughs) Don't follow me if you're looking for someone who's got it figured out or who's hitting the mark all the time or being some idealized person. Follow me if you want to laugh through the chaos, Mm -hmm. learn together through the pain and evolve as we experience the fullness of what Mm -hmm. this human experience has to offer. I have too much curiosity to fit in any box you may try to put me in. I have questions, Mm -hmm. so many questions. And I understand that by not simply taking someone else's word for it, that I'm going to fall and get bruised and bleed sometimes. I'm simply willing to bleed. The journey of truth, which is really what I'm on, is something I'm willing to die for. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you, or I can guarantee you, I'm 
going to take some wrong turns. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to guarantee you that I won't stop me from finding my way. Mm -hmm. I'm simply willing to fuck around and find out. (laughs) Yes. I'm sorry, but I needed that right now. Yeah. Wow. Fuck yeah. It's so powerful. And how wild is it that you just shared that caption where I talk about going all in and I just don't even... I didn't have that on my mind, and that's what I happened to share with you. Oh, well, you, I'll just my, you another little fun <laughs> share. Like, just like my little notes. Like, there is this, um, what did I say? Oh, a life of being rewarded for doing versus being. So just back up. Like, when you're talking about all the doing, in my mind, I'm just kind of, isn't that so fun? Of course. I mean, I had no doubt. Of course. <laughs> I would expect <laughs> nothing less with us. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, but this this post, I mean, mm. obviously we, we've touched on it a bit, but if you want to pull on that thread a little bit more and maybe even bring our audience just into like where you currently are and like how you're navigating mm. your epic life and, you know, in, in maybe kind of sharing some of the details of, of, of what this actually looks like mm. in Emily's going all in day-to-day life, because it is really fucking amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I think that it's important to share a little bit about what got me there. Mm-hmm. Because that post with the that amount of strong conviction and willing to F around and find out does not come from nothing. Yeah, true. I spent a lot of my life always doing my best, right? Always being myself. However, I found that I started to allow other people's beliefs about how I should be, how I should act, um, to, Im- to impact me. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it impacted the way that I showed up. And I went through a lot of really difficult lessons in my life that um, I really stopped using my voice. I stopped using my voice. I kind of shut down a little bit. I was quiet. I stayed back in the corner. And maybe people didn't really recognize this because I was still showing up in my podcast interviews and things like that. But I really shut down a lot of myself and where that led me was a really dark path and a really hard path to where earlier you were mentioning how um, admirable it was that I'm listening to my higher self. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There were lots of moments where I did not listen. Yeah. So much so that that voice within was screaming at me Mm. in the form of pain, screaming at me to make changes in my life, screaming at me to be brave enough to be myself and allow other people to be offended by it. Yeah. Right. So I just, I got to a really hard place and I just decided that I wasn't going to live like that anymore, that I was going to live life a different way, that I was going to live life as the fullest expression of me. And no matter what that meant, no matter where that led me, I knew that I'd be okay and that I'd get through it. So this post comes from just a very long and a very deep journey of uh, silencing myself, playing small, uh, filtering parts of myself so that people would feel comfortable around me. Mm -hmm. And all of those things led to a miserable existence. Yeah. I mean, anything, anytime you're saying... to your authentic self. This is why I'm such an advocate. It's such a core piece of everything in my work, all what, what I talk about and write about. But anytime you put your authentic self in the closet, I mean, that's what you're doing. You're but literally yep. saying, shut up. You don't matter. Quiet. I can't listen to you. You don't even exist right mm. now. It sounds very, I'm, I'm, strate- I'm like intentionally being very um, dramatic about totally. the words, but that is the energy. Mm-hmm. I mean, clearly you, you were feeling yes. that, right? Yes. And it's, it's so, you know, some, I mean, I, I believe that we're all here to express ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like self-expression mm-hmm. is part of, if, if for me personally, it's like the whole point. Totally. You know, right? Yeah. And for you, yeah. No, you, I, I was just going to say, you are someone who, you have so much inside to express. I think it's, it's mm-hmm. your greatest contribution to this world. Mm-hmm. So that must have really fucked mm-hmm. you up. It did. Yeah. It did. I was at the darkest point of my entire life, wondering if I wanted to continue life. And getting to that point was the biggest blessing because now I live in freedom. When you get to a point where you might not want to be here anymore. Yeah. um, And then you overcome that. You're free of all those things because you're like, fuck it. I'm going to die anyways. Right. Like one day you're going to die. Right. So you're not going to care about what other people thought about you or what they said or their judgments or opinions on you. 
So you know what? I came here to this earth. I chose to come here. I thought it would be so dope. Like (laughs) the divine version of me, right? The spirit that's within was like, I want to go to earth and I want to taste and touch and feel and see and experience. And I know that I have gifts I can bring into this world that Mm -hmm. are going to be incredible and helpful. And so reminding myself of that and getting back into the divine essence of who I am allowed me to embrace me because I'm like, I'm literally on purpose. I am on purpose for a purpose. I, I, I will send, I'm going to text you. I'm going to text you that that's one of my affirmations. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me because we, <laughs> we, we really are aligned in so I many know. ways and it's, it's beautiful, but um, I love hearing that from mm. you. And I love, I love feeling the conviction and everything that mm. you you're sharing what I want to ask you, because I think it could be really helpful to, to, you know, whoever's listening that mm-hmm. may be feeling, maybe they're at that like rock mm-hmm. bottom point. But when you said I made the decision, mm-hmm. like basically fuck this, I'm mm-hmm. going to be me. I'm going to mm-hmm. choose me. I'm going to, I'm, you know, what, can you talk about that moment? Cause mm-hmm. I think it could be really, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to be fully transparent here and just yeah, always. Yeah. 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 I was fantasizing about not being here. Yeah. I really was in that place and it was so much and it was taking up so much of my time that I got angry with myself and I said, shit or get off the pot. It's like, okay, well, are you happy with how you lived your life this year? No. Have you given all the gifts that you've been aware of for a very long time? Have you given it all to the world? No. Are there more experiences that you wish to have in this world? More sights you want to see? More of earth that you wish to experience? Fuck yes okay, then go do those things first. And this was that internal thought. This was that internal chatter. So what I did was I just, and I'm not saying that this is what other people should do. My therapist looked at me and was like, if that's what you need to get out of the dark spot, send it. But I, you know, you tell there wasn't much approval. It was just like, whatever you need in this moment. (laughs) But like I needed to flip a switch some way. And for myself personally, that's the only way I could get myself to flip the switch and take that off the table. Mm -hmm. All that fantasizing, it needed to be gone. Like it was all consuming. So in that moment, I said, okay, then go do those things first. Go experience all those things first. And no more thinking about this, talking about this, fantasizing about this, none. Like I'm fed up with my own stuff, right? Like no more. So I said, okay. And then I also, the other part of that decision was, asked myself, I was like, what would happen if I took all of the energy that I was giving to literally everyone else and all the resources and everything, like energy, time, resources, finances? What if I gave all of that to myself? What would happen? And I was like, that's an idea. That's a lot. I was like, that's a lot of energy. (laughs) That's a lot of energy. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of mental and emotional and in every kind of way. What would happen? Yeah. I was like, let's find out. And so January 1st, I said, all right. And I went to the gym and I ate. And that doesn't seem like a big deal, especially being a professional athlete. People know me for being on top of my shit. Yeah. I was in such a dark place. I was not training and I literally couldn't even force feed myself and I was trying. So this switch that I was able to flip Mm -hmm. allowed me to flip that switch and just step into the actions. And it's not like day one, I was like, oh, I feel better and happy and positive again. Yeah. It was like, I made the decision. And this entire year, I'm going to do what I said I came here to do. I'm going to be me authentically and fully because fuck it, I almost just died essentially. (laughs) Yeah. Right? Right. Like I'm here and I feel like I got this like second chance at life. Yeah. And at the same time, of course, I'm addressing, um, working with my healers every single week and I'm working on, you know, trauma and healing and all these things that I need to be working and healing from. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing the work. And when I'm doing it, I'm not showing up being cute about it. Yeah. Like mask off anything that's like a barrier is thrown, thrown off, lit in the fire, like, you know, disintegrated. And I'm like, here I am. Here's all my shit. Let's address it and let's heal from it. Darkness. You want to, you want to chat? Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Love it. (laughs) You know, like love it. So doing the work, showing up for myself, putting all of that energy into myself Mm -hmm. literally saved my life. So powerful. And I think, you know, for those who don't know you again, like it's also, I just want to insert this you know, your, your childhood and your upbringing, like you, you, you come from fucking hard knocks. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't have this because, you know, it could be easy, like looking at this True. gorgeous woman who's got, you know, but like, no, you, you, you're a fighter. Mm-hmm. You have fought and, and you mm-hmm. have done so well for yourself in so many ways, but there, there has been 
just giving more context to mm-hmm. you. You mm-hmm. know, there, there's a lot more than, you know, um, even just a moment of internal, like what you just shared, your totally. internal battles, you know, I mean, everything just adds up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get there just by no reason. Right. I want to ask you, because I know that, um, because you are a professional athlete, mm-hmm. you know, bodybuilding. And um, I'm just curious when when that really dark moment was happening for you, were you, wh- where were you health wise? Because I know that you, you, you went through some health issues, like mm-hmm. with your hormones and, you know, body, mm-hmm. <laughs> bodybuilding for those who don't know. I mean, that's, it is rough. It's hard on your body. And I did 21 shows. It's so gnarly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is a lot. Um, health-wise, I was actually doing good. I was doing okay. better than I had done in a long time. Yeah. But it was um, a few major key things, intimate relationships, mm. uh, a lot of family things going on. Also, I had a lack of boundaries in different areas. And I had an inability to hold a boundary when someone would continuously break the boundary. Oh, okay. So I was over giving myself in every kind of way, like right. just draining the fuck out of myself. Yeah. So it, it's clear like why I got to where I got. Yeah. Um, but I had to go through all of that to then learn and to know, to respect myself, honor myself, um, and to not need anyone else's validation for literally anything that I do. It's perfect. That takes me because I wanted to ask you, what would you say is your relationship with self-confidence now in comparison to, again, just kind of going back to before, um, because, you know, I mean, listen, for a beautiful woman, a powerful woman who's standing on stage, like, hey, mm-hmm. everybody, like, you can go ahead and fucking have a look. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Like, I am chasing excellence up yes, here. Yes, yes. Um, you know, there, there was, there was absolutely true Mm self-confidence back then. But I'm curious, like, what's the Mm -hmm. difference in that relationship now? That's such a good question. And my self-confidence now comes from the awareness that if it's anything external, if the confidence comes from anything external, all of those things can be broken, changed, lost, taken away. Uh, Yet, there's been a lot of things in my life that have broken the physical avatar of Emily. However, looking back and realizing that the divine energy within, she gets stronger every single time. And she literally never breaks. Even at the lowest of the low, she wasn't breaking. She was like in a training session getting stronger. (laughs) And now like overcoming that, realizing that like that divine part of me is always within. Mm -hmm. I am literally unfuckwithable. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's so good. You know, that's that's, that is the big mission, you know, with, with all the women that I'm supporting, it's to Mm -hmm. help you become unbreakable Mm -hmm. and unbreakable for me. doesn't mean that you don't feel pain. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you don't, you know, face discomfort and real challenge. No, you, you're, you're going to get your ass whipped a lot actually, Mm -hmm. but your spirit will never be broken Mm -hmm. when you create that relationship with yourself. Cause you got you the whole way through. And I love too, that you point out you know, the external piece, because it is true. I, I feel that even if it's something positive, let's just say you have like the best partner Mm -hmm. and he, you know, he's everything and he just makes you always just affirms the goddess that you are in every fucking way. But let's just say tragically something happens Mm -hmm. and now he's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, but you didn't cultivate that feeling within yourself. So, so the mm. feeling like you were so reliant on his, mm. you know, affirmations and mm. love and, you know, now he's not there. Mm. Like what? So I always say like the only variable that doesn't change in life is you are in you until you're out of here. Yep. So it's probably a good fucking idea to get into a really... <laughs> powerful yeah. relationship like yeah. you were doing with yourself. What yeah. what what would you say is like, I mean, aside from obviously just you naturally moving through your life and every day being a new day, which mm-hmm. is going to, I think, continue to fortify that relationship. Is there anything maybe more ritualistic? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. I, I love this question. I love all your questions. No, thank you. <laughs> So there's a few things that I've done that I feel have really helped me in my relationship with myself. I remember uh, there was one time I was meditating and I'm literally just like random afternoon meditating on a couch. I don't really expect much other than to like maybe quiet my mind. 
and I'm meditating, going into like the depths within myself. And I like see the galaxy within. And I like, I, my awareness popped open and I was like, there is so much more in here than I even realized, (laughs) you know, and I've always been really drawn to the galaxy and space and energy and all of those things. Right. Mm -hmm. So to like have this visual experience where I feel like as I am focusing on the inward depths of my soul that I saw that I was like, okay, I need to get more still and I need to practice stillness and presence because it's giving me access to something that I haven't really accessed before. Mm -hmm. I remember I did a one-on-one breathwork session and I've done multiple, but I always get something different. And this one time I just was really still and really present after the session in my meditation part of it, like right after the breathwork. And I felt power within. Amazing. And I said... The guy asked afterwards, what did you guys realize? Like share in in a few words. And I Mm -hmm. just said, I'm powerful. And I was aware of this powerful creative force that is literally within me at all times. Uh, A float tank. I did a float tank once and I was able to just listen and receive responses. I, after the float tank actually went past a mirror and looked at myself, but not in a vain way and not like in a, oh, look at that booty, even though it does look great. It looks fucking awesome, girl. (laughs) Worked a very long time to build a little booty. (laughs) That is a talented (laughs) booty for sure. It ain't easy to do that. (laughs) But you know, it's not the one where you like are just looking at yourself. Yeah. I caught something and I, I looked back at the mirror and I was like looking within my eyes to my soul and I saw her. And I looked back and I I felt like I actually was like looking at the divine being within for the first time in my entire life. It was so beautiful. And I like even looked different to myself. Mm -hmm. Not even a week later, one of my healers goes, you look different. And I said, thank you. I feel different. I've been journaling my entire life and it's helped me to develop the most empowered, loving and trusted relationship with myself. Journaling is a powerful tool that helps you to gain more self-love and self-confidence. It can help you get unstuck when you need clarity the most, and it helps you to powerfully move through any and all of your life challenges. It's a pathway to manifesting your biggest desires in life while creating an unbreakable relationship with your authentic self. I created You Are The Path, a guided and illustrated journal to help you gain all of this in your own life. In this 7x10 mystical journal, you get a personal introduction and final thoughts message from me, seven guided and illustrated sections with line pages and five thought-provoking journal prompts, seven empowering quotes from me. You get one freestyle creative section full of blank pages for drawing and sketching, and you get the beautiful artwork designed by a talented artist, Emerald Patchett. There are 120 pages of pure possibilities waiting for you in this journal. You Are The Path was born to help you create, discover, and illuminate the path that is you. Anytime you want to change your reality, there's there's really only one way to do it. You have to shift your identity. Mm. Shifting your identity is, is, it's not just, oh, I'm Roxy, I'm this podcast host, I'm a writer, whatever. It's actually what I believe about myself, right? Mm, it's so it, good. It your your core beliefs, your mm. you know um, core desires. I mean, there's mm-hmm. there's a whole framework actually that I've created around your I call it your self identity ecosystem, right? Mm-hmm. Like your core attributes and all this. When you were able to capture yourself in that beautiful moment, that mm-hmm. powerful moment, it sounds like there was a shift mm-hmm. that unfolded within. And then that shift, because that now you're seeing yourself and you're feeling yourself Mm -hmm. from that lens, Mm -hmm. you're, you're exuding that frequency and that Mm -hmm. energy and that essence out. So then it makes sense that you would receive. Right. 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah. (laughs) That's beautiful. (laughs) And it's so true. I love, I love that you mentioned energy is everything that when you want to change your reality, change like your identity in the form of like, you're saying the, the deep rooted beliefs that you have about yourself. Yes. 
And going back to like the energy part of it, it's Mm -hmm. like sometimes you have to cultivate that energy to be able to change your frequency in order to take on a new belief about yourself. So sometimes it's hard identifying what those beliefs are because they just feel like, oh, I have black hair. It's just a fact. Right. And it's like, well, actually, I dye my hair, number one. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But it's but it's like same thing with your beliefs. It's like you're dying that truth and you're not really realizing the true truth that's underneath that. Okay. So this is perfect. God, we are aligned. (laughs) We're so aligned. Well, because one thing that's so important to dig into with you is authenticity Mm. and really like your relationship with your authentic self Mm. and self-honesty because I I don't even want to say anything about it. Everybody always hears me talk about this shit. I want you to speak about it because especially where you are now and just, you know, your, Mm. yeah, your relationship with self-honesty and your authentic self. Mm, This is good. (laughs) I was avoiding journaling like two days ago. And at first it was like, oh, I need to journal. And I'm like not doing everything else but journaling. And then I caught myself and I was like, I'm literally avoiding this. Like, why am I avoiding this? What is it that I'm avoiding? So I like force myself to sit down and I face these things, right? And what I had to do was get deeply authentic with myself and realize where these limiting beliefs came from. And for me to do that, like I'm simply willing to face the truth no matter what it is, and no matter how hard it is. I've always loved truth. Like truth is just beautiful to me and it sets you free. So I've never been scared of truth. I've never been scared to face those things. For me, the challenge in my personality and how I've just been my whole life has been allowing others to see that truth Mm. and standing firm in that, even when it might upset or offend others. Mm -hmm. And for me, I come from a very heavy religious background. And within that, I would always say, it's not about religion for me. It's about relationship. And that's true. And it always has been. Yet I put myself in these containers that were very religious and still tried to be me. And I did my best. Mm -hmm. But something always felt off about it. Something always felt a little like I wasn't always with them on everything, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Um, And so this year, I actually took a step back from being heavily involved in those groups just as a personal decision so that I could really formulate this very strong version of myself that is authentic in who I am, that is not swayed by making other people feel comfortable, if that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. So I have my own relationship with God and that is authentic to me. And what's wild is I'm on this journey of truth. That's Mm -hmm. all that I want. I want the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm not like trying to be something else or do something else or, you know, leave this group or it's, there's no drama. Like I'm yeah. literally just yeah. on a journey for truth. Yeah. And what's really beautiful is I feel like I've been finding the most authentic version of me and the most authentic version of my relationship with God or the divine mm-hmm. in this journey, which is outside of all the areas and places and buildings that I'm technically supposed to find it in, you know? So it's been beautiful because I just gave myself the freedom to go on my own journey. And I think sometimes when we're looking for truth or answers or trying to find our way, it's very easy to get like stuck into other people's ideas or frameworks or boxes of what XYZ should look like and feel like. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of bravery and courage to say, I'm me and I'm going to go on my own path. And it looks like this for me. And I had to fight a lot of fear. I had to fight a lot of uncomfortable feelings in order to step into that. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, I truly am living such a different life that feels like the most authentic version of me. It's, yeah, no, I feel it from you. And I think it's so beautiful because, you know, just kind of echoing back in my own words, what you're saying is you're really just allowing the purity of your own evolution and your consciousness to expand and let Mm. it take you. Let it take you where it's supposed to take you, whatever Mm. that is, you know, Mm. which then also brings in the question around, you know, your relationship with self-trust because this Mm. is really, you know, like you said, it takes a lot of courage and bravery. Absolutely. It's so valiant of you. Yeah. You have to be, you have to really, really lean into, I trust myself. Cause mm-hmm. you, you, especially coming from the history where 
things were really like telling, informing you mm. more so. Mm-hmm. Now you're just like naked. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I love that you mentioned the self-trust part. I feel like for a lot of my life, I was very disconnected from myself. Mm. So I wasn't even able to hear like the intuition. I wasn't able to hear that divine self in order to trust it. I just like, I was like, well, they're older and wiser, so they know better than I do. Yeah. And I would just take that for what it was worth. Um, And so going on this journey of reconnecting with myself has allowed me to trust myself because I don't trust myself that I'm going to like hit the bullseye every single time or get everything right or make every right decision. I trust myself that I'll figure it out even if I don't, even if I fail, even if I get bruised and bleed along the way, like I'll figure it out. And, you know, a lot of decisions that I've made in my life have given me practical ways to practice this. Mm -hmm. Like in January, I rented a camper van for the first time ever by myself with my dogs (laughs) and just literally like drove off the property with this big van that I barely (laughs) know how to drive. I'm like, how do you turn in this? Let's, I don't know. Let's see if I can turn and I'm turning and I'm like, oh, okay, that went well. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like I have no idea what I'm doing sometimes, but like I'm willing to figure it out. And that trip alone, there were so many moments of even like something happening with the van. And I'm like, I have no clue. And people kept asking me like, (laughs) well, do you know how to like, you know, do maintenance on the van and all that? And I'm like, no. And they're scared for me. And I'm like, I'll figure it out. I don't, oh do you know how to drive in snow? You're going to Utah. I'm like, no, <laughs> but like, I'll figure it out. And so I just gave it's myself incredible. all these practical ways of practicing that muscle of mm-hmm. having to figure it out. And guess what? I'm in one piece. You are. <laughs> we <one> did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I figured it out. You know? Really? Yes. And you know what else? I love that you, you have continued to do in this process and are doing is you are really activating so much compassion, -compassion. self-compassion. And I call self-compassion a high performance tool because when we hear self-compassion, it is soft. It's, you know, it's nurturing. It's, Mm -hmm. but I like to put the high performance piece in there because I'm like, hold on, don't get it twisted. Before you get turned away, whoever you are, because, oh, maybe it sounds too soft and fluffy. Let me fucking tell you, actually, Mm -hmm. that this is some badass shit. Yeah. This is the shit that allows you to take chances, to bet on yourself, to go all in Mm -hmm. like you're, and to say, Mm -hmm. to say like, oops. Yeah. And not fucking hate yourself for it. And not beat yourself up. Allowing yourself to be, like doing the oops. Yeah. Be human about yes. it. Learn mm-hmm. and keep it fucking moving. Yes. I love that you mentioned this because I recently reframed perfection and I definitely have a perfectionist attitude. And I think I've always just wanted to be my best, but I would be hard on myself when I failed. Mm-hmm. And so now perfection to me is simply the authenticity of the moment, of the present moment. So full presence and full authenticity. So if full presence, me being fully present right now here, not thinking about anything else Mm -hmm. and fully allowing myself to be seen and in being my authentic self, if that leads to a mistake, a failure, a lesson learned, whatever you want to call it, then that is perfect. It's what I needed. Yeah. I don't think you can get it wrong when you're acting that way, when you're living life that way. You can't, when I quote, you can't make a, you can't make a wrong move when you make a true move, right? Yes. And those are the only moves that come from your heart. You, Mm. you know, it's, it's interesting. It's like, where the fuck did we, where did we get this memo that we're supposed to come out of the womb or wherever we came out of? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I came out, I'm a cesarean baby. So, you know, (laughs) Um, but where did we get the memo that we're supposed to come out and we're supposed to know how to do everything in perfect form at the exact fucking moment? Like, where did we get, but we all have carried that either a lot or at certain moments, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you can start to move away from that and go and and do exactly what you're doing, which is like, actually, (laughs) you know, you're a student of yourself, not just a student of life like that. Yes, you're absolutely a student of life, but Mm -hmm. the life part starts with you. Mm -hmm. So it's allowing yourself to be more curious than judgmental. Mm -hmm. Yes. Talk about that. Oh my gosh. Well, I think we're in a world filled with a lot of judgment right now. Yes. And especially when you grow up in certain groups or ways of thinking, that judgment can kind of seep into you. I remember I found this book. Oh my gosh, what's her name? She's huge in the spiritual personal development space. 
Um, but anyway, she wrote a book on judgment. And I don't know why I downloaded it because I was like, I'm not judgy. <laughs> <laughs> and I I read it. And, you know, it's a whole book on like releasing judgment from yourself, from others. Mm-hmm. And wow, I really needed that book. I didn't even realize how deeply rooted there was judgment, even of myself. Yeah. Um, until I started reading and going through that. So for me, releasing judgment has just been monumental. And what it's done is it's allowed me to have more compassion from first off myself yeah and secondly others like we are all on our own timelines we are all on our own journeys not one is better or worse like someone else may need to go through a 20-year stint of prison I have friends that have literally done that you know and they came out of that and now they're creating these beautiful brands and businesses and missions and helping so many people's lives and that was their timeline but if I were you know uh, friends with them 20 years ago and seeing them go in there could have been a place to judge and say wow how could they make those decisions or, you know, they know better than that and judge them for whatever it is that they're going through, not realizing that's the piece that they need to have that perfect piece of the puzzle in this puzzle, this beautiful picture of life. Like they needed that piece in order to be what they are now. Yeah. So just really realizing that allows me to have compassion for myself and compassion for others. Yeah. And it just roots me back in love. Ugh. <laughs> Which is the most powerful force in it the world. It really is. It's the it's the omni powerful energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think you know, anytime that there's judgment, there's restriction. You know, you're mm-hmm. you're not free. Yes. You know, so the more that you can continue to free yourself, and that's why I really love the idea of trading judgment. We don't get rid of any energy. That's just not how energy works. You have to transmute it. Right? Yes, you have to, yes. So if you could trade it for curiosity, which we all come downloaded with, but as we get older, I mean, obviously we know we have robust curiosity as kids, right? And yeah. then just life starts tearing it down and the rational mind and, yeah. you know, and so if you can start to, you know, foster the curiosity more and have that come into place mm-hmm. where the judgment is, a, you're going to feel so much fucking better in your own self, totally. right? But then I love also that you pointed out, because it is so true, like the more that you can be compassionate with yourself, empathetic with yourself, mm. loving with yourself, mm. you are you have the capacity mm-hmm. to put that out into the, in, into the world and to, you know, realize others in this way as well, mm. receive others like this as well. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, and, and that's what's also so interesting. It's like all this, we talk a lot, it's like a lot of your self journey, mm-hmm. but can we also point out how your self journey is actually also a deep contribution mm-hmm. to the world? Because the higher you go, mm-hmm. the deeper you go into this, you know, powerful, beautiful, loving, unbreakable relationship mm-hmm. with yourself, you are, you're just a better fucking human. You're mm-hmm. like a higher, conscious, Mm -hmm. lovable, loving human. And that's affecting every single person Mm -hmm. that you meet. I mean, you're affecting everybody right now who's listening Mm -hmm. or watching this in that way, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. No, don't be sorry. I love that about you so much. It makes me emotional because it's powerful. And I know how much people need love in their life and positive energy. And we say all the time, like, take care of yourself. It's, you know, the best thing you could do for yourself. It'll help others. But like truly, when you take care of your own energy and you raise your energy and your vibration, you are raising the vibration of the entire collective. And it is beautiful. And it is something that we so need. So, you know, I speaking about energy, you know, Mm -hmm. I think it's important to talk about even like what might lower your vibration or your frequency, you know, what are the things that that lower it versus what are the things that heighten it? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because sometimes we can fall into patterns of being around other individuals or environments or even music that lowers our frequency. Yeah, Like I remember... Um, listening to some music and it was after, you know, I'd gotten to that really low point and now Mm -hmm. I'm like doing better. I'm conscious of my energy. I'm, you know, meditating and breath work and working out and protecting my space as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But I turned on some music that I hadn't listened to um, in a long time. And I I love all types of music from like EDM to metal to rap to Mm -hmm. classical to jazz. I have such a wide variety of music that I love. 
Um, definitely love gangster rap because I'm from Houston. Yeah, girl. <laughs> <A leaf. laughs> um, but there was this one song that I turned on and I, and it was a little bit of a harder day, but I was in the gym and I was like, I'm just going to like, you know, kind of gym it out. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I had some dark thoughts return, but yeah. I, I now had this awareness of my energetic field and, and frequency, frequency, even in the form of sound and yes, music. That's a very real thing. Yeah. And I, and I noticed these dark thoughts started coming up and I was like, what's going on? And I turned the song off and it just got quiet for a second. The thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I was so hyper aware. I was like, oh my gosh, like even the frequency of this music really matters. So a practice that I like to do is just take inventory uh, as much as you can kind of remember, whether that's like daily or weekly, just kind of ask yourself, what was my energy like after uh, that podcast that I had? Mm -hmm. What was my energy like after those friends that I hung out with? What was my energy like after I meditated versus the morning when I was super rushed and I just got taught my to-do list, Mm -hmm. right? Like really recognizing that because if we can cultivate a vibrant energy, yes, there's a momentum to that. Yes, you're more potent. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're here to be potent. We're here to be robust. Mm-hmm. This is why even in the conversations around health, I'm like, health, cool, yeah. But no, fuck that. Vitality. Yes. Because vitality is where you get all of yes. that, right? Health feels very big, kind of baseline. Mm-hmm. We're not trying to be baseline. No, you no know? surface level here. No surface level, <laughs> no kind of, you know, just skimming, you know, like getting away with what we can. It's like, no, the highest frequency. Mm-hmm. Because really, in, when you, it's like, what is the highest expression? Mm-hmm. You're going to be, if you're living from and even to the evolution of your higher highest uh, self-expression, mm-hmm. then your frequency is always becoming more magnetic and mm. more potent and just stronger, yeah. you know, more powerful. Yeah. And when you get around other people that are living their lives that way and prioritizing their energy, yes. you know, and really respecting and honoring their own energy, yeah. it raises yours too. Did you have to, on the note of that, did you have to... Cut some people. <laughs> I already knew where this was going. <laughs> of course you did. Our next podcast is we just don't talk. We just look. <laughs> Are you guys catching just this? Like, we're just like. <laughs> I hope they're watching and With not our just black listening. Hair whipping. Yes. Like, <laughs> um. Yeah. Well. So for those who can't read our minds. Um. Yeah. But did you have to? What did you have to say goodbye and no to to mm. really level yourself up into this state of evolution and authenticity and allowance of your full self? I had to start to just protect and honor my own energy in the form of even allowing people access to me and allowing myself to say no to anything and everything that didn't feel like a full fuck yes resonation. Like it needed to resonate at the deepest level in order for me to say yes to it. So I would even personally like kind of uh, feel like I should say yes or want to say yes. And I was like, hold on, check in with yourself. Is this like a full fuck yes? I'm so sorry. No, don't worry about it. I thought that was on a do not disturb. We're all right. It is on do not disturb. How did that happen? (laughs) Um, So I had to really check in with myself and ask if it was like fully resonating with me. And if it wasn't, I said no. And then the next best thing I did was actually put my phone on do not disturb. (laughs) Where nothing can come through except for apparently an alarm uh, to give, I'm turning it off, to give uh, your baby some medicine. So, oh, oh yeah. So, I saw the list of alarms. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's real. <laughs> yeah. My dog just had surgery for anyone listening. Aww. So I have alarms to give him medicine and that was one of them. But um, phone's off now. Do not disturb is the best thing you could do on your phone though, because no one can call you. <laughs> I agree. I love it, that switch. And then you get to choose when you open your phone and you get to now respond to everything from the day. So I just created more boundaries in general Mm -hmm. around uh, people, situations, groups. And if it didn't feel like a full fuck yes, I wasn't there. What are, what are, what are a couple of non-negotiables that you have, if you have any, like on a day-to-day basis, Mm -hmm. um, or like just some things that you, like, I'll just, for me, non-negotiable, my morning ritual. Mm. And, you know, I can, I'll, I'll alter the time if I need to, but yeah. I always like to give myself 90 minutes to just go inward and mm. do my journaling, my meditation, talk with my muse, breath with all the things, read. Mm. What are what are some of yours if you have any? Yeah, for me, and it changes based on the season that I'm in. So mm. I think if you were to ask me like even six months ago compared to now, it would be very different. Mm-hmm. 
I'm on the road right now. So I'm in a different state every four days or so. Yeah, you are. <laughs> so it's a lot of moving around and my sleep schedule is not always super consistent. So my sleep is priority. I need to get my mm-hmm. sleep. So sometimes I'm waking up later and then I'll have an appointment. So what I've learned to do is have daily ingredients that make my life like the best, most amazing version of my life. And it's okay whenever I get those ingredients in. Now, for me in the morning, even if it's like wake up five minutes of movement of some sort, usually stretching. Yeah. I used to not stretch at all. And I don't know if it's just like as soon as you get over 30, you're like, yeah, I need to stretch now. <laughs> but uh, it feels amazing because I'm so much more in tune with my body that when something's tight, I'm not just stretching and complaining about it like I did in my 20s. <laughs> I'm stretching and I'm like sending that area love and I'm saying, I'm breathing into it. And I'm saying, mm. you can release that now. Like, thank mm. you. And it does. And it feels so good when my body just has that physical release of stress or tension or yeah. muscle buildup, whatever it might be. Yeah. So stretching and then reading. I love to read something to just inspire my my brain and my thoughts. And then just some form of writing, whether it's journaling or it's writing out my intention for the day mm-hmm. or um, if I need to get something off my mind. Sometimes my dreams go crazy. Mm-hmm. Like my unconscious had a field day the other day. Oh, dreams. really? Oh, yeah. I went through like four of my deepest fears in my dreams. Oh, wow. Which is wild because the day before I had asked, what are the fears? What are they? What are the things that are holding me back? And then I had four of them in a row. I was tired. When I woke up, I was like sweating. I was like, okay, glad we just- You're in the octagon all night. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but I was thankful because I got the answers that I needed and that allowed me to go in and do the deep inner work. You know, yeah. my dreams are a, a space of healing for me, which has been fun if I remember to get up and journal about it and actually work through it. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, yeah, your subconscious is talking to you. And I mean, it sounds mm-hmm. like you have a good connection, which is so great because that's how... I mean, that's where you want to, you want that relationship to reprogram a program that's not serving you. Mm. You want that relationship to be strong, to help you visualize Mm -hmm. some of the things that you would like to manifest in your life, which Mm -hmm. I know are already unfolding for you, which is so exciting. Yes. It's crazy that, you know, you were mentioning the manifesting earlier and Mm -hmm. how having is evidence of wanting. And when I think about this time last year, like literally I could probably find some screenshots on my phone right now of... My, let me set the scene. Yeah. I'm living in Texas at the time. I'm in a four bedroom, four bath house by myself. It's beautiful. I have a gym, a sauna. I have a whole setup. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It's like what anyone would want in my position. And after a 14 hour work day, I'm on the couch and I'm looking at reels of camper vans. And I'm just imagining, I'm like, man, I wish that I could do that. Or I wish that I had somebody that would want to do that with me. Yeah. And I would just look at these beautiful scenes and I would like, it's almost like I was just like dreaming of this, but feeling like it couldn't be a reality for X, Y, and Z reasons. Mm -hmm. Little did I know that was my higher self being like, Hey, I want to show you something. It wasn't just like a desire. Yeah. I think sometimes we really deny good desires that we have inside and think that it's just like this, like playful dreaming and it can be, but I also think that 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 playful dreaming is a space and an opportunity for you to see part of your future self. Fuck yeah. Like those desires are not for no it's reason. It's a fucking calling. It's a calling. It mm-hmm. is. It's like literally, it's like the phone's ringing and it's like, hey, you will you pick up the phone? <laughs> Seriously. I just had one of those. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And now fast forward to now, I just put down a deposit for a camper van. It's so exciting, girl. After Ugh. going on that camper van trip in January and realizing that I loved it and it fulfilled me in such a beautiful way. I was so scared, by the way. Let's talk about that. Yeah. I was terrified. It's not like I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go do this. Eventually, that's the point that I got to. But I was scared. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. I actually don't know if I'll like it. What if I hate it? (laughs) Like, you're in this small area. It's me and the dogs. What if I do it and I hate it? And my friend was like, you're literally in a van, like a car. You could just drive to my house and like, it's fine. Well, because you also, it's important to say, like you gave up home. Like you, oh yeah. Yeah, that's the important piece. <laughs> Everything's in storage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, my, my you know, I, I just decided, I was like, you know what? I'm willing to fuck around and find out. Let's just send it and see what happens. And if I hate it, I hate it. I'll figure it out. Can you make a t-shirt? <laughs> I think I'm going to have you need to. to because you. like, it's such a freeing <laughs> statement when you can really embody that. Like, yeah. you know what? 
I'm going to fuck around and find out for myself. It's a freeing way to live your life. Yes. Because then you get to go experience and you rely on your experiences. Not that they're all going to be perfect and you're going to hit the mark and they're going to be exactly what they're meant to be for your person. You're going to learn. You're going to grow. You're going to use it to make you better and wiser, even if it's a hard lesson to learn. Yeah. And I think, you know, because you're really living into the idea that it's less about the outcome and it's more about who you become along the way. Yes. <laughs> okay. And I love that you say this so much because this relates to like the van life or being on the road. Right now I'm on the road doing a traveling podcast tour. I just don't have the van, but I literally made a post about this, uh, just a little Instagram story because here I am driving from Vegas to Arizona and I am stoked not to get to Arizona because I'm in the car on the journey. And because I'm looking and there's beautiful mountains and the way that the sun is hitting the mountain this way. And then I see water and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be able to pull over. And I find a place to pull over and I get out with the dogs and we're taking this beautiful image of just like water and mountains and the sun setting and magic. Like it is beautiful and it lights up my soul. Mm -hmm. And so there I am. And I'm like, this is just such a good reflection of how I'm living my life right now. Mm. It's not even about the destination. Mm. It's not even, I'm stoked. Like when I get there, that's going to be dope. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy that. I'm going to have a great time. There's probably lessons and beautiful moments there for me, but it's the journey. It's yeah. like the present moment is mm -hmm everything. It's beautiful. And so I'm really relishing in the present moment. And I know that being present is my favorite thing to do. It's literally my favorite. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, I think we all just like got high from it. <laughs> from your <laughs> oh, we all just got you high just from it. just from us with like the presence, like, because I just saw all the visuals. And, mm. but that is, I mean, that's like the juiciest moment in life mm. because you are, you're, it, it is, again, it's like another it's like the concert for me. Yes. The full circle. It's well, the same, fucking concert. And I, I didn't tell you, I don't I actually don't know if I told you off camera, but I went to one of my favorite artists ever, Odessa. Um, oh, no. A couple didn't. of weeks ago. So your oh, whole, and I was front row. So like, <laughs> yeah, duh. <laughs> so like your whole experience, I'm like, uh-huh. I literally know exactly what that oh. feels like. And one thing I think maybe particular for us, we're both like very energetically sensitive. Mm -hmm. For me, I had never been front row, front row where there's no one in front of me, no one else's energy in front of me. So I was able to fully just receive everything that they were like sharing and putting down. So it was like just for you. Yes. yes. And there was even this one song and it's this version of you by Odessa. If anyone wants to look it up, highly recommend. And the visuals that they had to go along with it was like, like this person coming up to this mirror, meeting that version of themselves, like for the first time ever going all in on the authentic expression of who they truly are. A week after I just looked in the mirror and met myself for what felt like the first time. Okay. Well, so that, <laughs> that's so powerful and so beautiful. And, you know, when you talked about the mirror the first time, I just kind of sat with this inside because I'm just inside. I'm like, well, we could talk about this after. But now that you brought it up again, I have to okay. insert this. Okay. So I'm going to just say this really quick to breeze through it, but just it's really more of a share with you or okay. to whoever hasn't heard this yet. But, you know, my listeners have heard me talk about the woman in the mirror. Okay. The woman in the mirror is... So years, I don't remember how many years ago I'd have to look back at my journals, but it was, it was a long time ago at this point. Um, this is where I met my future self. So it started with the, uh, it started journaling. I started journaling like my future self because mm -hmm. I understood that the life that I envision living, like the reality that I want to live was not going to make me who I am. Mm. It's this woman that I am and that I become mm. that curates my reality. Mm. So I had to get really clear on who is this woman mm -hmm. and not from this, just this like, certainly not from a status place, from more of a mm. character place, mm -hmm. from that self-identity, self-concept place that we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier, right? So this is, you know, journaling, journaling, journaling details, like, and having so much fun because as a writer, I can just like, oh, you know, really. Yes. <laughs> but then I started to take, I take this um, vision of her into my meditation, right? Or like the concept of her. And it's so interesting to say it out loud, but then one day, one day, um, I was imagining this home, this future home and um, I'm in the master uh, bedroom mm -hmm. and master bathroom and there's future Roxy. 
and it's this, it's me. It's, but it's so interesting, Emily, because she, so I have several names for her. So mm-hmm. Future Self, um, My Muse, mm-hmm. Women in the Mirror, my ride or die. Yes. She's also, she's my highest self though. Mm-hmm. So she is me, but yet there's an energy off of her mm-hmm. that I don't feel separate from, Mm -hmm. but it does feel like an expanded expression Mm -hmm. of myself. Mm -hmm. And why I appreciate this, especially now, all these years later, I mean, she's so stoic. I I know there are so many moments in my life on a day-to-day basis, especially specifically like when I feel challenged, Mm. because I am so deeply in a relationship, not only with her and who she is and what she's about, but actually in a relationship with her, like she's my fucking teammate, Mm. you know? But there are so many times where, let's just say I'm triggered by something, I'm, you know, challenged by something, I'm, you know, harmony is set off. I immediately think about like, well, what would she do in this moment? Mm. And it puts me in the fucking power seat Mm -hmm. because, because I'm so clear on, she's so stoic, she's so composed, equanimity. Like these are high qualities that just, you know, I feel so powerfully from her. Um, but I just, I had to share that it's, there's so much more. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's really special, Mm -hmm. you know, and I wanted the name of one of my books to be the woman in the mirror, but that name is taken. But, um, what about the muse in the mirror? Well, I actually, so one of the titles that (laughs) stop (laughs) becoming your muse, I I own that. that that. that. So that will be a book. So you heard it here first, but yeah. yeah, but yeah, that, and it's all about, you know, the, you know, creating this relationship with your highest self. You know, Mm. for me, future self is not just you a year from now, you five years from now. It's the highest version of you Mm. that's always in front of you for a reason. Mm. Because like, she's your North Star. Mm -hmm. You know, she's the fucking blueprint. That's why the name of my journal is You Are the Path. I love that so much. Because yeah. And I can imagine, I don't know why, like the the listeners were coming into my mind just now of what they may be thinking or feeling. Maybe they're my listeners because your listeners are used to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, totally. they know you, they know your lingo. Um, and so I'm just thinking of people who are trying to understand this concept yeah. of having a relationship with that version of yourself. Mm-hmm. And I'm imagining even like maybe my old self who had no concept of this would just think like, yeah, like I got like me thinking about like the the, av- the avatar version of me, like yeah. this Emily, like, you know, she's cool. I approve of her, you know, whatever. No, no, no. There is like such depth to what's inside mm-hmm. and depth and wisdom and divinity and clarity. That's why when you ask like, what would she do? What would mm-hmm. that highest version, that most expansive version of myself do? the clarity comes right away because she's literally always there. Yeah. So I just encourage anyone that maybe has trouble to understand the concept a little bit to get still and get present and maybe practice some of these practices. There's a lot of different things you can do. It doesn't have to look one way, Mm-mm. but get into these moments of stillness and start asking questions of the divine being that is within because when you start listening, you will get your answers. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Ugh, you're yeah, so good. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, you and I, I so much more to come. Like yes. this is like, yes. <laughs> we have so many more conversations to have. I'd love to just close out this. Well, before I even get to the last question, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to live in this beautiful magnetic conversation? I would like to share that I have retreats coming up. Yes. Um, so I'm a podcast host. Check me out on the podcast, Evolve with Emily Show. I'm a retreat host. And one of my favorite things in the world is creating a safe, loving container for people to come and be the authentic version of themselves while connecting to themselves, to their divine, to each other, and creating community, fun, laughter, playfulness. I, it's one of my favorite things in the world is to like bring people together and allow them to feel loved for exactly who they are today, even if they never changed. So I welcome anyone that might be interested to come to a retreat or check out the podcast. Um, definitely. So good. Yeah. Check I out love the podcast. multiple spaces there for yes. you to join and be a part of just the message and everything that I'm doing too. You. Yes. Oh, I'll make sure all that's in the show notes. And the Thank question you. I was going to ask you actually was, what are you excited about what's coming up? So you... <laughs> 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> well, so I'm going to end it on one more question. Okay. Though. Okay. Um, and this will be a fun one to ask you when we do it again, just to see if like it changed. And not that it's ever going to be one thing. I think, especially with us Gemini's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if you had a spirit animal at this moment <laughs> on this day, yeah, because it'll probably change tomorrow. Yeah. What's your spirit animal? Mine has always been the butterfly. Oh. It's yes. the ultimate vision of transformation. It's my brand logo. And what's amazing is the blue monarch butterfly is on your journal. <laughs> so when you handed it to me, I was like, this is the most aligned shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's just, I encourage people yeah. if they're not too familiar with the butterfly to really look into it because it's such a beautiful depiction of life and the things that we go through in life in the process of growing and of evolving and of becoming that highest, most expanded version of yourself. Like you sometimes are going to go through the darkness. You're going to go through that cocoon stage where you're going to feel isolated, alone. It's going to be dark. You're not even going to know if there is something on the other side of that. And then eventually you're going to feel and see a little bit of light and that little bit of light all of a sudden is just going to spring forth. And what comes as a result of you being willing to face the darkness head on is going to be the most beautiful version of you that you have ever met in your life. And you're going to get to such a place of deep reverence and love and respect and just honor for yourself. And when you show up in the world in that way, there's nothing you can't do. I've got nothing more to say except your fucking poetry and motion. And I love you. Oh, thank you. That means so much coming from a writer. <laughs> I love you. Your Instagram, everything, website, retreats, yes. podcasts, throwing it all in the show notes. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so, so grateful that we have bridged the gap mm -hmm. and really just like, because I know that this is now it's like the shit thing. is on. This is a yeah. thing. <laughs> We're an item, everyone. <laughs> okay, not like that. <laughs> uh, all right. I love you. Thank I love you. you so Thank you so much, much for having me on. Until the next to be continued. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is not over. <laughs> no. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode, you guys. If you loved it, please share it on your social. Throw it up on your Instagram stories and tag me. I'm at Black Belt Beauty. I am also at Roxy Look. R-O-X-Y-L-O-O-K. I love connecting with you guys. This is a conversation that I want to just continue growing with you guys. So if you feel inspired to hit me up, do so in that space. I always enjoy hearing from you. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by rating it and reviewing it via iTunes. It's such supportive help, you guys. It really helps the visibility of this podcast. So I appreciate and thank you in advance for doing that. And on that note, you guys, I'm signing off with all my love and always looking forward to catching you on the next.